with the third pick, the Vancouver Grizzlies select Sharif Abdurrahim. Here comes Sharif. Bounce pass through the legs of Shaw. An excellent zigzag goes up. Shot clock last second by Sharif. Thinks about it, gets his man up in the air, drives with the right hand. Durahim Sharif! Sharif Abdur Rahim exemplifies leadership and high character on the basketball court, in the boardroom, and as he advocates for youth. He rose to the top of his game as a pro athlete and represented the United States on the men's national basketball team that won the gold medal at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Sharif credits his parents as his greatest influence. They set a great example for him and his 11 siblings. I was encouraged to go after my passions, go after my dreams, still with a high emphasis of, of learning, of education, of um, being a, real, a well-rounded person. I encourage my children and, and all young people to, to do the same thing. Sharif's education, training, and demeanor aided him on the court and in his leadership positions within the NBA. He is currently the Vice President of Player Operations. Transitioning from professional basketball to uh, the business world, to corporate America, I've borrowed many of the skills, habits that I've learned um, as a professional athlete. Teamwork, sacrifice, preparation, dedication, working hard at your task. And these are, these are skills that um, in any walk of life, I think, follow you. The young people I come across, the young people we work with in Future Foundation, these are the habits and traits that we try to instill in them um, and that stick with me. He established the Future Foundation, a nonprofit organization, in 2001. The organization provides quality, education, health, and life skills programs. Each year, the Future Foundation serves nearly 1,500 youth. The type of impact that I want to have, the type of person that I continue to strive to be. That comes directly uh, from my parents, from the community that I was raised in, from people here in Atlanta. And I think the work that we try to do, the efforts that we try to put out is, is a direct result of that. And praise and the thanks uh, are to God for that. Sharif Abdur Rahim. So as all of us have witnessed, this is a special night. Uh, we, we thank Valerie Jackson for being here with us. As uh, I, I know that some are uh, recent folk in Atlanta, but uh, you have to know who Maynard Jackson is and was. And he was just extraordinary human being, bigger than life, bigger than life and personality impact and vision and accomplishment. And we thank Valerie for all that she is doing and as well as keeping this legacy alive and available to all of us. Uh, I was blessed to have known Maynard personally. He had visited the mosque several times. Uh, and I was blessed also to know Muhammad Ali personally. And we thank May May for uh, keeping his spirit uh, uh, available to all of us because when you hear her you can't help but hear Mohammed you can't help but hear it uh, Ali had a way with words and and you have quotes on your tables you're welcome to take those quotes but only if you're gonna live those quotes if you're not gonna live them leave them on the table let somebody else get them but if you're gonna live those quotes you can take them uh, I'm, I'm, I sort of had a couple of others that are not on your table that I want to mention before I get Sharif up here. Um, I, Ali just had a way of words. He said that he was so fast that he could turn the light switch off on the wall and get into bed before the room got dark. <laughs> he told one of his fiercest opponents, that uh, he saw him shadow boxing. He saw the opponent shadow boxing and the shadow won. <laughs> he told him, if you ever dream of beating me, you better wake up and apologize. <laughs> 
Muhammad said, I'll beat you so bad, you'll need a shoehorn to put your hat on. <laughs> but Ali would always say, there are much more pleasant things to do than beating people up. And he would tell young people to go to college, stay in school, and he would say, you know, if they can make penicillin out of moldy bread, then they can make something out of you. <laughs> so Sharif, I've known all of his life. He was formed and inspired by our community and by Ali. Uh, Ali just had a major impact on our community. Uh, I was there when Ali and Maynard fought, uh, and, and it's, he's just been such an influence, not only on our community, but on the world. But Sharif was formed by Ali and his, his words, as well as his father, Imam William Abdul Rahim, and his mother, Amina Abdul Rahim. They, uh, They raised a, young, a wonderful, wonderful young man that he follows the, the principles that, that uh, Islam puts out and they can be seen in some of the uh, other words of Ali. Ali says, I try not to speak about all the charities and people I help because I believe we can only be truly generous when we expect nothing in return. And that has been Sharif. Sharif has given so much to our uh, Atlanta community, our Muslim community, our non-Muslim community, but he, he's, he, he's not comfortable talking about it and others uh, talking about it. But he has been so philanthropic that, he's, that the wealth he's shared with other people have made them uh, philanthropists. That's how much he has spread his wealth that many of these others have picked up on that and began to uh, help those who are in need. Sharif also lives by this motto, Ali says, live every day as if it were your last, because someday you're gonna be right. <laughs> so what was not mentioned uh, on there about Sharif he is now, uh, it, it was mentioned, but I don't think you got the point. He is now, after scoring uh, something like 15,000 points and playing in 830 games with an average of 18.1 points per game, he is now in the front office of the NBA. He's a vice president of the NBA, and he is stationed in New York and he has the job of being the director of player personnel. Well, that was the old job, player personnel. He now is the vice president of basketball operations, both domestically and internationally, for the NBA. He has a lovely wife and a wonderful family. I present to you our brother, Sharif Abdul Rahim. Oh, let me, let me put it in his hand. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little taller than Imam Pleman, so I'm raise it. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, uh, Imam Pleman, thank you uh, for that wonderful introduction. Imam Pleman, my first um, Imam. Uh, I'm humbled by the recognition from the Islamic Speakers Bureau. Uh, you know, I've heard a, a number of awards and recognitions that I've won throughout my um, athletic career, but to be acknowledged by the community um, and folks that, one, raised you, and two, that you recognize as your own, uh, is a little overwhelming. So again, um, thank you. 
if, if, there, if there is something that I have done or I do that is worth acknowledging, the praise, the glory uh, goes to Allah. Um, is, is, is just something that Allah gave to me to be able to share, and I pray that I'm, I'm doing and I have done a good job with that. Uh, I recognize my, my sister Kadira, who in Atlanta is a champion and a leader of a lot of the works that we do. Uh, someone, I met someone tonight, they, they described her as a force, and I think that's fitting. Uh, so I recognize her for all of, that, all of the work that we do with the Future Foundation. Uh, my wife, uh, Delicia, um, intelligent and beautiful. I thank her for allowing me to be able to give. And my sister, Noelle, who's also here. Uh, inspiration, this is, this is a night recognizing the, the legacy of Muhammad Ali. Uh, I wouldn't have had the thought or the idea to be a sportsman, to go after my dreams without the, the inspiration that he set, the example he set. Um, Sister Miriam, I am internally indebted to you, to your family, for lending your father to us. Uh, so thank you. Um, sitting and listening to the work that um, Sister Samaya uh, is doing with the Islamic um, Speaking Bureau of Atlanta, I'm reminded by uh, a quote or a saying that I, I heard once from an imam that I considered that I was raised to identify as my leader and I accepted as my leader. Uh, he made a point to say that if you, if you follow history, throughout history, uh, all changes, all revolutions, all um, ushers of, of new order that came in were established by small groups. It was, it was never the, the order of the day or large amounts of people that created the change or ignited the change. Uh, when I hear of the work that, uh, and, and the, the, the collaboration and the bringing together the community, the faith, the, the, the inclusiveness that the Islamic Speaking Bureau stands for, I think of this, uh, that, that it was it's small groups, it, it's small groups, it's small groups like this that usher in change. I hope that the work that we're doing in Atlanta with the Future Foundation is a part of that. I look to continue to, to build on that, build on this partnership. I thank you again for this recognition. Assalamu alaikum.